Good evening and welcome to Parents as Pupils for English. My name is Hannah Driscoll and I'm the Head of English here at the Reach Free School. This first slide um, poses a couple of the types of questions we might ask as starter activities or do now activities in English at the Reach Free. The first very important question, why study English literature? And the second, does punctuation really matter? These are questions that we would invite discussion, invite ideas, suggestions and talk about as a whole class before then starting to answer them. We will come back to these questions later in these slides. So for English in Year 7, pupils study a range and depth of literature. Uh, we open with a short stories unit, uh, stories with a twist. It is a very, very enjoyable unit and a really nice way to start the year. And it's a really good way to develop the skills which underpin further study and understanding of English in a very enjoyable way. Uh, they study a range of short stories, including things like um, all I Said Was, or Lamb to the Slaughter by Roald Dahl. And then their assessment is a reading-based assessment on one of those short stories. Moving on then to Autumn 2, we have a novel study, which is centred around the novel Race to the Frozen North by Katherine Johnson. Uh, we use this as a basis to bring in the study of nonfiction, of writing from different centuries, of poetry. And then those skills are all brought together in a writing assessment, which is writing to persuade. We then move on in spring one to our introduction to Shakespeare unit, and that is a reading assessment based on comprehension of characters and genres. We are looking at three of the comedy plays, focusing on comedy in year seven, and then moving up through different genres as we go through the school. In spring two, we have a poetry unit, which is centred around Cloud Busting by Mallory Blackman, but interleaved with some higher level poems, many of which are ex GCSE poems to introduce those higher order thinking skills and stretch the analysis as early as possible. The assessment for that unit is writing to describe using the devices that they have learned about in the poetry unit. And then we have an English language unit in summer one, which is preparation for the end of year exams. Now, we have an assessment which is a non-fiction language exam that covers both reading and writing skills. Then moving into to summer two, we have the novel study on the very popular Animal Farm by George Orwell. Uh, the assessment for this is a reading assessment based on characterization in a short section of the text. So we would read the whole novel, discuss the themes, the techniques, and then the reading assessment would be a more focused aspect. So as you can see, as we move through the year, we have a, a range of assessments based on reading, writing, nonfiction, fiction, poetry, drama, and a whole range of different texts. Moving into year eight, we open with Maggot Moon by Sally Gardner. This is a dystopian novel. So we, dis uh, we discuss the, uh, the expectations and conventions of dystopia, comparing it to utopia. Uh, we, read, we do a fast read on the whole novel and then explore the different techniques used and the themes raised. And then that builds in to a reading assessment on the writer's craft. We then move into A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare, which picks up on the foundation with the introduction to Shakespeare that they've done in the previous year. The assessment this time is a writing assessment, which is inspired by the play. So again, we're interleaving reading and writing skills. We then move into a literature unit on the short stories of Sherlock Holmes. This is um, to capitalize on the 19th century literature element brought in in the previous year with the short stories there to familiarise pupils with the literature of the 19th century and make them much more comfortable and confident with it. The assessment in this unit is a reading assessment based on understa understanding and enjoyment of the short stories. And then we move into drama 
Noughts and Crosses by Mallory Blackman, obviously a very, very popular novel, but we use the adaptation of the play, uh, which capitalises on the drama taught by Shakespeare. So we're looking at, again, at a different range of times and different types of um, literature. The assessment here is a writing assessment, which is a diary entry based on characters and events from the play. So we're looking at how nonfiction inspires drama and how that can inspire nonfiction. The English Language Unit is preparation for the end of year eight exams in uh, summer one, and that is explorations in creative reading and writing. So this is based on fiction language and the exam will cover both reading and writing skills. And then the final unit in year eight is reading and writing, voices and activism. It covers a range of different voices, a range of different people, different subjects, different situations. And the assessment here is writing an eyewitness account of an important historical event. Then moving into year nine, we open with Shakespeare again, Romeo and Juliet. Um, it's a study of the whole play. And then we move into a new unit, The Supreme Lie, which is um, has key themes of dystopia, building on Maggot Moon from year eight, and climate change, which has been dealt with and discussed in the summer two unit of um, Voices and Activism. Obviously, we're linking in there a lot of very topical um, ideas and things that have happened in our in our current situation in, in our current lives. In spring two, we study the drama of the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime in the same way as we do with um, Noughts and Crosses. We look at the play version of a very well known novel. Spring 2 moves us into who we are, which is a combination of literature and language. It's another new unit which really looks at identity and different presentations of, of identity in a whole range of different texts. In Summer 1, we study Cry Freedom, uh, which is our journalism and conflict writing unit. And then in Summer 2, we move into poetry, which is our preparation for GCSE. So key skills in English ultimately all comes down to communication. That can be verbal communication and written communication. Literacy, of course, underpins all subjects, not just English. Critical thinking is paramount in English, and it's what we start with from year seven and build up and up and up. Critical analysis and evaluation, looking at the impressions that are created by particular words and techniques, but also how those are created and most importantly why looking at alternative interpretations and, encu and um, encouraging empathy is also very important we work on presentational skills as of course all subjects do across the board and as i've mentioned briefly as well empathy is a really core skill in english really important skills um are also discussion and debating, building into the speaking and listening skills required to GCSE, but much more importantly than that, the skills required for life. So we build in as much discussion and debate as we can. In terms of assessment, uh, at the beginning of year seven and at the end of year seven, and then in year eight as well, we have GL progress tests, which are externally set and marked, and they test comprehension, spelling, punctuation, and grammar. In class, once every half term, we share a personalized learning checklist, PLC, at the beginning of a unit, and that outlines the core knowledge and skills that need to be learned, developed, and assessed over the course of the unit. We then have continuous assessment through questioning and class activities, and an end of unit assessment based on the skills and knowledge already outlined in the PLC. So this, will, this is um, a very typical example of a year seven and a year eight unit. So stories with a twist is how we open year seven and Maggot Moon is how we open year eight. So as you'll see at the top, there will be a, a short instruction to the pupil as we cover these things in class you should review how confident you are with each and use it as a revision list so what we always have is what pupils should know and what pupils should be able to do 
Now, at the top, as you'll see, we have specific details of the unit assessment. So all pupils know exactly what their assessment is going to be at the beginning of the unit, and they can then use the PLC to assess themselves on their progress towards being able to complete that assessment to the best of their ability. We then have the knowledge aspects, what people should know, and the skills aspect, what they should be able to do. You'll see also from these two PLCs how those skills become more developed between year seven and year eight, and then obviously moving through into year nine as well. So typical questions we might ask are, why might the writer have done this? Why this word and not another? What does this image suggest or connote or make you feel? What do you think will happen next and why? Always digging deeper. Why do you think that? What is it that's given you that impression? Why do you think the writer wanted you to react in that way? And once we can get people's thinking analytically, it's a short next step to writing analytically. We might encourage empathy by asking pupils to imagine you're, they are giving a speech during house assembly called Hidden Voices, and they might need to write the text of a speech, explaining the point of view and persuading others to agree with you. So this would be a non-fiction task, writing to persuade, for example. We might look at how does Shakespeare present the relationship between Beatrice and Benedict in Much Ado About Nothing, a reading task using those what, how and why questions that would have been discussed and practiced over the course of the unit. Okay, so really importantly, how to help at home. And the number one thing to do here is simply to encourage reading for pleasure and create a reading culture at home. Reading is more important than anything. So it's really important to allow your child to have freedom as to what they want to read. We will be covering challenging texts at home and whilst we would love all pupils to be going home and thinking, hmm, what will challenge me? Um, as long as they're reading, we are happy. It's really great to talk to your child about reading, asking them about it, um, maybe read the same book together and just, you know, discuss your um, likes and dislikes. Watch the news together and discuss the different points of view. Um, books around the house is also really, really important. Um, but places like the Oxfam bookshops, um, you can get really excellent books for relatively low prices. And of course, library membership is really important as well. Uh, discussion to look at issues from different perspectives to develop empathy is really important. And please, please, please encourage your, uh, your children to proofread and edit their work, check their own work to see whether they can make it even better and even more perfect before they hand it in, not just in English, but across all of their subjects. The other thing it's really important to do is to encourage resilience through metacognitive thinking, which is all about encouraging pupils to think about how they work. So when your child is struggling, do encourage them to consider what they already know or have done before that might help them. So almost certainly we would have covered something in, in class that they could refer to. Maybe they could check the lesson slides and other resources on Google Classroom. Maybe there are words that have the same prefix or suffix that could help them out. Um, and also always important, think about the context in which a word has been used. That might help them to work out the answer. So going back to that starter that we looked at before, does punctuation really matter? After the class discussion, we would typically share a couple of images like this. Some people find inspiration in cooking their families and their dogs. Others find in inspiration in cooking their families and their dogs. Very simple. Um, in one situation, the families and the dogs, unfortunately, are the ones who get cooked. And in the other, I would suggest that the families and the dogs have a much better time. Another favourite, a woman without her man is nothing, changes to a woman. Without her, man is nothing. In both of these examples, we would discuss how actually word order changes nothing. It's the punctuation 
particularly in the second example, which actually reverses the entire meaning of the sentence. So we use these examples to show how incredibly powerful punctuation can be. And when we come back to thinking about why we study English literature, we would use questioning to bring out the kind of ideas about how it, literature relates to life. It allows us to see ourselves reflected back and understand our place in the world, to meet people and travel to places that we never normally would, so building cultural capital, allowing us insights into other wor worlds and cultures that we might not otherwise come across or understand. It's a wonderful source of escapism. And ultimately, it is humanity. The study of literature is the study of the human condition. It is all about life and literature feeds the soul. Thank you for listening. And if you've got any questions at all, please do feel free to contact any of your English teachers or me. And the contact details are here on screen. Thank you.